Welcome to the topic on vascular diseases of the kidney part 1. This is Dr. Brenda presenting this topic. If you see almost all the diseases of kidney secondarily affect the renal blood vessels. The systemic vascular diseases like vasculitis and hypertension are also involved renal vasculature. In this video I explained about the two common vascular lesions of the kidney nephrosclerosis and malignant hypertension. Two more are there we will see in the part 2. Let us first see about the nephrosclerosis Nephrosclerosis is defined as sclerosis of the small renal arteries and arterioles. This is almost always associated with essential hypertension. It is otherwise called as benign nephrosclerosis or hyaline arteriolosclerosis, in which the arteries and arterioles show intimal and medial thickening and often resulting in luminal narrowing. You can see the small arteries here with normal tunica intima, media and externa. And in nephrosclerosis, you can very well appreciate the wall thickening and the luminal narrowing. The pathogenesis includes endothelial injury because of high blood pressure followed by platelet activation. The increase in the vascular permeability leads to plasma protein leakage and hyaline degeneration. These vascular changes resulting in renal ischemia, interstitial fibrosis, tubular atrophy and glomerulosclerosis. Finally, they result in renal failure. Grossly, both the kidneys are contracted symmetrically and the cortical surface shows diffuse fine leathery granularity. Microscopically, we can see glomerulosclerosis that is pink hyaline deposits and fibrosis of the glomeruli, hyaline arteriolosclerosis that is pink deposits on the arteriolar and small arterial walls small and atrophic tubules and increase in the space between the tubules nephrosclerosis is usually seen in elderly individual aged more than 60 years and also seen in association with all primary renal diseases and worsen with diabetes mellitus on urine examination we can find the urine volume will be less than 500 ml per day that is oliguria and the chemical examination of the urine shows mild proteinuria that is 1 plus or 2 plus proteinuria Next we are moving on to malignant hypertension which is defined as blood pressure usually greater than 200 bar 120 mm of mercury it can occur de novo that is without any pre existing hypertension or patients with mild hypertension may progress to malignant type usually seen higher in developing countries and patients present with severe acute kidney injury and renal failure Pathogenesis is same as nephrosclerosis. Starts with endothelial injury and platelet activation, but at a higher level. And this malignant hypertension always associated with fibrinoid necrosis of the arterioles and small arteries of the kidney and intravascular thrombosis. Mitogenic growth factors from platelets like platelet growth factor and plasma causes intimal hyperplasia leads to hyperplastic arteriosclerosis. Grossly, we can see small pinpoint petechial hemorrhages on the cortical surface usually from the rupture of arterioles or glomerular capillaries. that leads to flea beaten appearance of the kidney microscopically the prominent features are fibrinoid necrosis of the arteries which looks like homogeneous granular eosinophilic appearance on the vessel wall also seen onion skin appearance of the blood vessels due to concentric arrangement of the proliferated intimal smooth muscle cells of the blood vessels this leads to marked narrowing of the arterioles and the small arteries and form micro from by in glomerulus that results in ischemic necrosis of the kidney and ends in acute renal failure the major clinical features of the malignant hypertension apart from the renal injury are altered higher neurological functions like anxiety confusion and headache followed by blurring of vision due to papilloedema and retinal hemorrhages on urine examination we can find the marked reduction in the volume of the urine that is oliguria or anuria and marked proteinuria that is 3 plus or 4 plus proteinuria thank you for your patience listening we will see in the vascular diseases of the kidney part 2 thank you